Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. We really want to thank the Lord that this is another day that the Lord has made. Indeed, we will be glad and we will rejoice in it even as we look forward and we activate our spirits that we may hear of the Lord. I want to welcome all our viewers. We want to welcome everyone uh, to just tune in and listen to what the Lord has in store for us in this day in the name of Jesus Christ. And just before we start our service, we want to say a prayer and join with me as we say this prayer. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you, we want to lift up your name, we want to exalt your name for this opportunity that you have given unto us, that indeed we can be blessed by your word in the name of Jesus Christ. How I pray that even as your word comes forth, you're going to use this, your servant in a mighty and in a great way to reach into us, to activate our spirit, and even to be a blessing into us in the name of Jesus Christ. How we pray that you're going to touch each and everyone that, that is listening, O King of Glory, that we live and listen later, O oh my God, that Jehovah, whatever challenges that they are going through, you shall be their God in the name of Jesus Christ, and indeed you shall come through for them in the name of the Lord, O oh God. We thank you and we honor you and we exalt your name. In Jesus' name we pray, believing and trusting. Amen and amen. Without further ado, I want to call our bishop to come and give the word of today. And wherever you are, wherever you're tuned in, I want you to just put your hands together, activate your spirit, even as we bring forth our bishop uh, to bring the word of today. In the name of Jesus Christ, let us appreciate our God as he comes. Greetings to you all, our viewers. We come to you today from South Bay Pepper Church. My name is uh, Samuel Munai, the senior pastor of uh, South Bay Pepper Church. We are indeed humbled to come through this platform as we bring the word of God to you. Today, I want to talk to you on the subject I have entitled, How to Succeed in Life. How to Succeed in Life. Having been born here in Nairobi, having been born in a hospital, Pumwani, and having been raised in Dandora, I want you to know, looking at life and looking at people growing near the slum, it wasn't easy. I look at myself today and I flash back and say, how have I come this far? And I stand here to talk to you how can you succeed in life? Turn with me in the book of Proverbs 16, verse number 3. The Bible says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. My brothers and my sisters who are watching me, if you want to succeed in life, it all begins by committing everything you have to the Lord. And that is why that scripture in Proverbs 16 verse number 3 says, commit to the Lord whatever you do. Living Bible says like this, the same verse, Proverbs 16 3, it says like this, commit your work to the Lord, then it will succeed. For you to succeed, it begins by total surrender, total giving yourself to God. I remember being in Buruburu High School, the time I was in Form 2, I gave my life to Jesus. And that was the beginning of me seeing light. That was the beginning of me rising from nothing into what I am today. Commit all your plans and everything you do to the Lord. In the book of Proverbs, chapter number 3, verse number 6, the scriptures say, Everything you do, put God first. Everything you do, put God first. He will direct you and crown your efforts with success. Everything you do, put God first. Many a times we don't want to put God first. We want to put our education. We want to put our finances. We want to put our strength. We want to put our connection. 
But I come to you today to let you know, if you want to succeed, put God first. Underline that scripture. Living Bible translation, Proverbs 3, verse number 6. In everything you do, put God first. My brothers and my sisters watching me, how then do you succeed in life? How can you make it in life? Is it education? Is it a good job? Is it money? What is it that can make you succeed? Every one of us, we are born so that we may achieve it in life. Where our parents never went. Where any other of our siblings in our family never reached. We want to break every barrier and go beyond where they ever went. And so today, allow me to bring you at least six principles that will enable you to succeed in life. Number one, if you want to succeed in life, six, these are principles. Remember, principles don't change. Principles remain. Principles are there. And if you stick to the few principles I'll give you, I would want to assure you, you will succeed in life. Number one, how, how can you succeed? Number one, work with a purpose. Work with a purpose. It doesn't matter what kind of a job you are doing. It doesn't matter what employment you have gotten. It doesn't matter where you are. I want to challenge you today. Any little job that you have gotten, any space of work you have gotten, work with a purpose. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 17, verse 24, the Bible says, An intelligent man aims at wise action, but a fool starts off in many directions. An intelligent man aims at wise action, but a fool starts off in many directions. Proverbs 13 verse number 6, it says, A wise man thinks ahead, a fool doesn't, and even brags about it. Mm. So what does it mean? It means if we are intelligent, we must aim at something. It doesn't matter what it is. It may not be a white collar job. It may not be in a big company. It may not be in a place of influence. But as long as you have gotten an opportunity, put your hands in it. Start from something. It may be starting from a low point, from nothing. And then you are fixing. Remember the scriptures we read. In everything you do, put God first. So I am reminded in the scriptures, in the book of 1 Samuel, Chapter number 2, verse number 8. The scripture says, He raises the poor from the dust and He causes them to sit with the kings. If you want to succeed, put your hands on work. Whatever work that comes on your way, don't choose. Don't choose. Just go ahead and do it. If you fail to plan, you are planning to, to fail. Successful people, they make daily preparation. Show me anyone who has succeeded and I will show you a man or a woman who made daily preparations. So my friends, as you listen to me, I challenge you, start working. Don't choose. Don't choose. If you want to be successful, work with a purpose. Aim at something. Remember Proverbs 24. Proverbs 17 verse 24. An intelligent man aims at wise action. But a fool starts off from every direction so uh, in the book uh, the second point i want to talk about how do you succeed in life number two insist on integrity insist on integrity regardless of what you do insist on integrity nothing la lasts without integrity if there is anything that has killed our society if there is anything that has destroyed us it is corruption if you want to ascend to any position, if you want to do anything, if you want to rise up and become somebody in this nation, you have to be corrupt. Today, I want to rebuke the spirit of corruption. If you are corrupt, you will never go anywhere. Look at the scriptures in the book of Proverbs 10, verse number 9. Proverbs 10, verse number 9. The Bible says, a man of integrity walks securely. But he who takes crooked paths will be found out. A man of integrity walks securely. But he who takes crooked paths will be found out. 
Yes, if you are corrupt, if you are getting finances in means that are not right, I want you to know the scriptures are clear. You will be found out. In the book of Proverbs 21 verse number 6, it says, This honest gain will never last. So, why take the risk? This honest gain will never last. My brother, my sister, just be a man or a woman of integrity. Put your hands in point number one. Put your hands and work with the purpose. And then number two, be a man or a woman of integrity. Be a man or a woman of integrity. In this book of Proverbs, it says, if you want to be genuine, if you want to be successful, insist on integrity. Insist on integrity. In the book of Proverbs 11, Proverbs, sorry, Proverbs 16, verse number 11, it says, The Lord demands fairness in every business deal. The Lord demands fairness in every business deal. It doesn't matter what kind of business you are doing. It may be importation of cars. It may be importing different other goods. It may be you have a shop. It may be you are doing something different. I want to challenge you today. If there is anything the Lord is demanding from you, if you want to be successful, then you must be fair. Be fair to your customers. Be fair to everybody you are dealing with. Be fair to the people you have employed. And that way, you will be on the path of success. What have I just said? Number one, for you to be successful, work with a purpose. Number two, for you to be successful, insist on integrity. Number three, if you want to be successful, never make an excuse. Never make an excuse. Many of us are not successful today because we are full of excuses. Why am I not successful? Why am I not where other people are? When you compare yourself with people you went with to school, you feel, hmm, something went wrong somewhere. And you have a lot of regret in you. You say, if only I went to Mango, if only I went to Starehe, if only I went to, if only I went to my friends, that time is gone. Rise up now. Bury every excuse you've had and begin to aim at something. Never make excuses. Actually, when you read in the book of Proverbs, anybody who makes an excuse is a lazy person. And today, I want to deal with the spirit of laziness. We want to uproot laziness in the name of Jesus. It says like this, the Bible calls a lazy man a sluggard. It calls a lazy man a sluggard. A sluggard is always accusing, accusing, blaming, blaming everybody. My parents never did this to me. My parents never this. Oh, my uncle, my cousin. Oh, forget about all this. I want you to know today, in the book of Proverbs 22 verse 13, leading Bible translation, the Bible reads, the lazy man is full of excuses. I can't go to work, he says. If I go outside, I will meet a lion in the streets and be killed. Mm -hmm. I repeat, Proverbs 22 verse 13. A lazy man is full of excuses. I can't go to work, he says. If I go out, I might meet a lion in the streets and I will be killed. That is a big problem. Why? It is because he wants to blame others. He is lazy, wanting to watch, wanting to, to, to get free food and just eating. And actually the Bible says, if anybody does not work, he or she should not be given food. I challenge you today, stop the spirit of laziness. Put some strength in your feet. Don't wake, don't wake up late. Sleep early. Wake up early. And go for it in the name of Jesus. Look at that word. It says, everybody who, every, anyone who blames other people, this person is actually, when you blame other people, actually you are lame. Look at that word, blame. You are lame. You are making excuses that can never hold water. Proverbs 14, 23, the Bible says like this, work brings profit. Talk brings profit 
poverty. Work brings profit. Talk brings poverty. We've had a lot of talk, but now don't make an excuse. I know of a friend of mine who has put his one his hands on work. And let me tell you what, just from cleaning toilets, he has a master's degree. He has studied both in Kenya, got his first degree in Kenya, went outside the country, got a master's degree, and now he has put his hands in cleaning of toilets. That man is not poor. I want you to know, if you continue to give excuses, if you continue to blame other people, ah, you will not rise into anything. Time has now come. The seasons are here. Let us arise. Let us stop blaming people and go out for it in Jesus' name. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter number 5, verse number 7. The Bible says like this, Dreaming instead of doing is foolishness. Dreaming instead of doing is foolishness. Come on, my friends. Let's come out of slumber line and begin to take action into what we do. Proverbs 14, 23, the Bible says, Work brings profit. Talk brings poverty. Remember that. Proverbs 13, verse number 4, the Bible says, Lazy people want much but get little, while the diligent are prospering. Lazy people want much, but, but they get little while the diligent are prospering. My friends, let us shake off every spirit of laziness and let's put our hands into work as we trust God for our prosperity. Number four, remember, I have just said, if you want to be successful, number one, what did I say? Work with a purpose. Number two, insist on integrity. Number three, never make a next choose. Number four, what do you need to do? Never stop learning. Never stop learning. Listener, I know you are listening to me, but I want you to understand. The moment you stop learning, it is the moment you stop to grow. Always be growing and developing. In the book of Proverbs 15 verse 14, it says like this, Intelligent people want to learn, but stupid people are satisfied with ignorance. Did you hear that? It's not a quote. No. These are the scriptures. What does it say again? Proverbs 15 verse number 14. Intelligent people want to learn, but stupid people are satisfied with ignorance. I want to challenge you today. If you have your diploma, it is time you went in for your degree. If you have your first degree, it is time you went in for your second degree. If you have your second degree, it is time you went in for your doctoral. Don't stop learning. When you learn, you are preparing yourself for great opportunities ahead of you. We have, you know, the moment we stop learning, we stop growing. If you want to be a leader, you must be a person who reads. You must be a lifelong learner. There is no leadership without learning. There is no getting opportunity and getting privileges and going higher and climbing ladders of leadership, ladders of position, ladders of influence if you are not a person who reads. In the book of Proverbs 18.15, Living Bible translation. The Bible says, The intelligent man is always open to new ideas. In fact, he looks for them. Mm -hmm. An intelligent man is always open to new ideas. In fact, he looks for them. Now, you may ask me, preacher man, where will I learn from? Where will I look ideas from? Let me give you very few things here that you can learn from. Number one, where can we learn from? We can learn from the word of God. We can learn from the word of God. Proverbs 13, verse number 13. Despise God's word and you'll find yourself in trouble. But obey it and you'll succeed. Amen. Despise God's word and you'll find yourself in trouble. But obey it and you will succeed. I know I am talking to a man, I am talking to a woman who God has already said.
to prosper them. Every barrier, every hindrance that has caused you not to reach your full potential, we are breaking it in the name of Jesus. And may the Lord push you into the next level. Why? Proverbs 13, verse number 13 is your portion. Despise God's word and you'll find yourself in trouble. Obey it and you will succeed. I love that word. I love that word. So, where do we learn from? Number one, from the word of God. From the word of God. Number two, where do we learn from? We learn from wise people. God has put people around us. People who have gone, they have the experience. They have gone through what we have never gone before. These are the people I call wise. Get around wise people. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron. Proverbs 15, 22. Get all the advice you can and you will succeed. Without it, you will fail. Mm -hmm. Get all the advice you want. Without it, you will fail. So, what am I saying? Get people, people who have succeeded in the areas you want to pursue, in the areas you have a dream about, in the areas you have passion about. Get around them. Learn from them. These are wise people. They will cause you to see what your peers will not help you to see. So what does the Bible say again in Proverbs 15, 22? Get all the advice you can and you will succeed. Without it, you will fail. So number one, we learn from the word of God. Number two, from wise people. Number three, we learn from our critics. Our critics. Yes, we can learn from criticism. In the book of Proverbs 13, verse number 18, if you accept criticism, you are on the road to fame. Hallelujah. If you accept criticism, you are on the road to fame. Those of you who are viewing me, I know you have been criticized. I know they talk about you. I know they have said bad things about you. I know they have painted you in a wrong way. I want you to know today, you are on the road to fame. If nobody talks about you, then you don't even exist. Then you have nothing even to offer. How many of you would like to be criticized? How many of you will realize sometimes you can learn from it? I don't like criticism. But let me tell you what. When, when you are criticized, they are making you to see that which you do not see. They are making you to understand something about you that you never understood. So criticism will not bring you down. Criticism will take you higher and higher and higher. Where do we learn from? Number one, from the word of God. Number two, from wise people. Number three, from critics. Number four, where do we learn from? From failure. Failure. Yes, from failure. Actually, somebody said, failure is the womb of success. Failure is a great tool that teaches both you and me we can succeed and i am talking to people who are listening to me because i know success is your portion i know even after this sermon you will rise up into victory you will rise up into success in jesus name we usually learn from our failures than from our successes in the book of proverbs 28 Verse number 13, a man who refuses to admit his mistakes can never prosper. But if he confesses them and forsakes them, he gets another chance. Wow, that is a powerful scripture right there. A man who refuses to admit his mistakes can never prosper. But if he confesses them and forsakes them, then he gets another chance. Friends, Yes, let us admit our failures. Yes, let us admit our mistakes. Yes, let us admit all the failures we've gone through. You may have gotten a D plus. You may have gotten a D. And according to our system, there is no hope. It simply means there's nothing that you can achieve in terms of career. Let me tell you, check it off. And begin to know that you can rise from failure to success. Allow me to quote one man, one of the politicians in this country. And I would want you to guess what the name is. This man wrote a book by the name From Chaco to Gold. 
He used to sell charcoal. He rose from charcoal. He was burning charcoal right in Molo. And by the time he died, he was one of the millionaires, billionaires actually, people controlling the economy of this country. He was a government minister. I want you to know, even you today, as you listen to me, you can rise from charcoal to gold. Don't allow any failure to pull you behind. I want you to know the seed of success has been planted in you through the word of God. So, I just want you to remember a few things that I've just mentioned in this sermon. How can you succeed? Number one, work with a purpose. Number two, insist on integrity. Number three, never make an excuse. Number four, learn to learn. Be, never stop learning. Never stop learning. And I have given you a few things. Where do we learn from? Number one, from the word of God. Where do we learn from? Wise people. Where do we learn from? Our critics. Where do we learn from? Failure. Number five, if you want to be successful, economize your time and energy. Economize your time and energy. This is a spiritual issue. Time management is a spiritual issue because we waste a lot of time in sin. Friends, I challenge you today. Economize your time and energy. You are not growing any younger. The strength you have today, you will not have it tomorrow. I remember as a young person in school, when we were doing physical education, I would roll up in the air. Today, I can't. What does that mean? Time has elapsed. Time has gone. I challenge you, friends, economize your time and your energy. Begin to do something. Begin to do something. If you kill your time, you are committing suicide. If there is something you need to do, do it now. Come on, don't procrastinate. Don't say, I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow will never come. It is either now or now. I challenge you today. Look, the scriptures. The Bible says in the book of uh, Psalms 91, Teach me to number my days, that I may apply my heart to wisdom. Oh God, teach me to number my days. I challenge you again. We are not staying here for a long time. May the Lord give us wisdom that we may know how to live. In the book of Ecclesiastes 8 verse 6, the Bible says, There is a right time and a right way to do everything, but we know so little. There is a right time and a right way to do everything, but we know so little. The point here is saying, don't waste your time don't waste your energy. Start to do something. Anything you are trusting God for. Anything you are believing God for. I want you now to begin to exercise your muscle and know I can do it. I can go for it. God has created me. I have what it takes. I can make it and I know you will make it in Jesus name. Point number six. If you want to be successful in life. Number one. Number one I said what? Uh-huh. Can you remember? Work with a purpose. Number two, insist on integrity. Number three, never make excuses. Number four, never stop learning. Number five, economize your time and energy. Number six and the last point, resolve to stick with it. Yes, resolve to stick with it. We are talking about staying staying focused we are talking about endurance we are talking about stamina we are talking about going for it we are talking about sliding we are talking about yes i was born to achieve it come on resolve to stick with it proverbs 22 verse 29 living bible it says like this do you know do you know hard work a hard working man he shall be successful and stand before kings i love that scripture do you know a hard-working man he shall be successful and stand before kings if you are hard-working you will be successful and you will stand before kings i want to prophesy those of you who are listening to me those of you who are watching me may the lord cause you to stand before kings 
They may not see your education. They may not see anything, but they will see your hard work in your office, wherever you are, wherever you are employed. May you stand before kings. There is a myth that says successful people do everything right. That is a myth. They don't. The fact is, successful people probably make as many mistakes and stumble and fail as many times as losers. They just don't let it hold them. They don't just accept failure. They get up and go for it again. In the book of Proverbs 24, verse number 16, the Bible says, For though a righteous man falls seven times, he rises up again. Though a righteous man falls down seven times, he rises up again. Friends, you may have failed. Friends, you may have gone through challenges in life. Friends, people may have concluded you will never arise into anything. You will never amount into anything. Oh yes, friends, those are people. But listen, there is a word from God. The one who created you, the one who formed you, the one who brought you on this planet earth. Success is your portion. And I want to trust God. Those of you who are listening to this video, those who are listening on View Sasa, listen to me. May the Lord cause you to be successful. Even the people who thought you'd never amount into anything. Today, there is something that is happening in the spiritual realm. You are rising up and every barrier around you, everything that has closed you, everything that has put you down, is being broken in the name of Jesus. I want you to remember the scripture I began with, which is very important, in the book of Proverbs 16, verse number 3. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. Today, commit everything. Stop for a moment. Make a reflection. Put your eyes on God and commit it to the Lord. Even as we go through this challenge of COVID-19, Friends, let us commit it to the Lord and we will be successful. I want you to join up with me now as we go in for a short prayer. That God, whatever you are doing and wherever you are, may God touch you. May God use you. May God open up doors for you that you may be successful. None of you listening here, you will remain the same. The things that people have said you can never do, you are beginning to do them from today in Jesus' name. Pray with me now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I commit every viewer listening to this sermon that Father Lord God has spoken about how to be successful. I pray today that Lord God, every barrier around them, we break it in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that the viewer, the listener will be successful. I release success in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we commit them in your hands and we declare they are blessed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I pray and I believe. Come on, shout with me and say, Amen. Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his coin line to shine upon you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop, for that powerful word. And uh, I want to believe that indeed we have been activated. Our spirits are so charged by that word that we have just received. And if I were you, I would believe everything that we have been taught in the name of Jesus Christ. And now this is another time, even as we have come to the end of our service, I want to encourage our members that uh, it is always good to keep up with the word of God. For tithes and offerings, our pay bill number is 401-9059. Account number is tithe or offering. And in, in the place where you're paying your tithe, you're going to write account number as tithe, hash, your membership number. Thank you.